everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be giving you a little pep talk about paper. So let's do it! Okay, so today's video is a little bit different. Um, I want to give you more of a pep talk. I get a bunch of messages from people saying that their artwork doesn't look like mine. What are they doing wrong? And I'm here to tell you that yes, it does take a lot of practice, which is one part of it, but two, it is also the materials you are using. I have done a couple paper comparison videos, but I just wanted to reiterate what I was saying in those videos and let you know that it's probably not you, it's your paper. So I have two different kinds of watercolor paper here. On my left, I have Arches watercolor paper. This is how I buy it. It's the watercolor pads. Um, there's none left in this, but it's not the block, which is where they're all kind of glued together. Um, so it is cheaper, but Arches watercolor paper, I use cold press, 140 pounds, and it's 100% cotton, which in my opinion makes a huge difference. If you look at the paper, I hope you can tell in this video, um, there's a lot of texture to this paper. It is cotton, it just, it's a bit rougher, but that also allows the water and the pigment to soak in and stay a lot better than it does in say, Canson paper. So Canson paper I have here, I pulled it from my watercolor notebook. Canson is also 140 pounds cold press, but it is not 100% cotton. So if you look at the two and compare them, you can already tell, hopefully in this video, I don't know if you can see it, there is a definite difference in texture. This is a lot smoother. So I find when I paint, the water and the pigment does not soak in. So it's a lot lighter. It doesn't show off the color of the paint as much. So I'm just gonna do a really quick comparison video. I'm gonna do a painting on both and I'm gonna show you why your, your paintings may not look like mine. It is not to get frustrated with yourself. It is to know what your materials can do for you and your paintings. So a while ago, I did a peach video. And I'm just going to do that because I found when I tried it on both different on both papers, they looked quite different. So I'm going to start on arches. Now, if you watch my video, you'll know how to do this. So you start off with an oval like that. Now the great thing, like I was saying about arches, is that it soaks right in that color, okay? Also, it stays wet a lot longer, which allows um, a, lot of, a lot more time for color bleeds and blends, you know, because if it dries too fast, you're just gonna be adding a layer on top. Also, the blends work a lot better on this paper. So you can already see, you're not gonna get any funky watermarks. Now I'm gonna add some dark red. Like that. I'm gonna wash off my brush. Get some orange in there too. And the great thing about arches is that it just blends together so well, okay? you're gonna get, in the most of the time, a nice seamless blend from one color to the next. Okay, so I just cleaned off my brush, dried it, and I'm just gonna move some of that color around. Okay, I'm gonna take some of my cadmium yellow, tap it in there. So I find this paper is great for florals, stuff like this, like fruits, Okay, now I'm gonna do a quick leaf. And I'm just gonna touch that piece a little bit, get a nice little color bleed. I'm gonna get some darker green, like that. Okay, so there's my peach. So you will see once it starts to dry that the colors blend into each other seamlessly. You're not gonna get funky watermarks as long as there's not a ton of water on your paper, okay? That just goes to say for any watercolor painting. If you add too much water, 
you're gonna get watermarks. And I'll show you what they look like after because you're gonna get it on this. So I'm gonna do the exact same painting over here. I'll start with my peach or my orange color. Now, I don't know if you can just tell, but my paintbrush glides a lot easier on this. And the water tends to sit on top, look, and bead rather than soaking into that painting. Okay, so I'm already getting pools of water, which is not something you want because when that pool dries, you get watermarks, okay? Also, you can see the difference in color too. It's a lot lighter. And these I'm actually using professional paints. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my red like I did. Even the color bleed is a lot different. You want those spider vein kind of things and this is more concentrated in one area where those pools of water are. Okay, it's not bleeding out as easy. You're getting more definition in between colors rather than a blend. Okay, and the color's not as vibrant. It just isn't. And even trying to move this paint around, I'm drying off my brush and it's still pooling in areas. Okay. Like I'm trying to blend it together to make it look seamless and it's just not working for me. <laughs> okay, so this is where you can struggle and think, well, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong with my painting? Why doesn't it look like hers? It's your paper, it's not you, okay? I'm gonna do a quick leaf and then I'm gonna show you a close up of both. See, when you drag it, you lose some of that color and then all the color ends up where that water is too. And the color bleed, because there's so much water, it's not even a lot of water that I'm using, but the water is not soaking into the paper, it's just moving along on top of the paper. So that bleed is going through, which you don't necessarily want, okay? So this is the difference. I did the exact same thing on both papers. But look at the difference, okay? The color bleeds don't work as well. The blending isn't as seamless, okay? So when you are having trouble with this, don't get down on yourself. You need to keep trying and you might need to try different materials. Am I saying go out and spend a fortune on expensive 100% cotton paper? No, okay? Um, Canson served me well for at least a year and a half into my watercolor journey. So I suggest, especially if you're just starting out, keep practicing on the Canson paper, okay? Watercolor can get quite expensive after a while, and until you really build up your technique, you can end up spending a lot of money. But if you are having trouble and this is your outcome and you are trying to produce things maybe to sell or give to people and you're not satisfied with this, you know, maybe upgrade. Okay, what I do with a lot of my sheets of paper, you saw I had a really big pad of the arches paper. And what I do is I cut them into quarters, especially when I do my, my tutorials. I don't use, I never use a full sheet. And even when I do cut out things that I use, I tend to have, sorry, lots of scrap pieces left over. And I use these papers, you know, maybe I'll create a bookmark. Maybe I'll create something for a card with them. I don't waste paper. <laughs> so that's just a little tip, okay? So I don't want anyone to try these videos and get down on themselves because it's not looking like mine, okay? It takes a lot of practice and it takes the proper materials for it to look similar. So I just wanna tell you all to keep trying keep going, you've got this, and just most importantly, have fun. There is something that's really soothing about using the Canson paper too, and getting those funky patterns. You know, um, at the beginning, I did a lot of abstract stuff and just shapes, because you do get these really cool patterns with this paper. If you add water to already paint it on paper, you can create cool watermarks, and maybe it's a bit more abstract. You know, like I'll show you if I were to do a watermelon, okay, 
way. So I'm going to do my, my watermelon slice shape. You know, you're doing like a cool um, abstract piece. You know, it doesn't have to look realistic. It doesn't have to look like mine. It can look like this too, and it can still look pretty cool. Okay, you can clean off your brush, add a bit of regular water to it. Oops. And it will still look awesome. Okay, also this paper is really great if you are doing watercolor lettering. Okay, if you're doing some lettering with a small brush, because this paper is so smooth, your letters will glide a lot easier. I find it's a lot harder to do watercolor lettering on arches just because it is roughing. You're not gonna get the smoothest lines. So maybe give that a try too with a small brush, okay? I'm not putting anyone down for using art or bleh, cans and paper. I just wanna let you know what the difference is and how both can benefit you. And I just want to encourage everyone to keep going because this paper did serve me very well for a very long time. And then when I was ready to start producing something to sell or for my tutorials, I wanted to upgrade to better paper. So yeah, there's my little paper, my little pep talk about paper. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it gives you the boost you need to keep creating and that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more. Have a great day guys, bye.